All right, so welcome back to Quarantine Chronicles. I'm Jason Lee, but you already knew that. And I'm getting ready to go live with JoJo. Um, and so she's probably on time. I was, you know, flustering around before this, trying to figure out what I was going to do. But anyway, I think JoJo is a super dope artist who I have um, been watching from afar. And uh, so I reached out to her this week and she uh, says she will bless us with a conversation. So... Jojo, if you're in the chat room, go ahead and message. Make sure you request um, to go live with me. I did not get another haircut. This is the in-between haircut look. I just shaved. You may still see blood um, because I was rushing. All right, so I'm going to see if Jojo's here. She's not here yet. You know, I'm going to always be on time now. Um, in the meantime, yesterday I had a lot of fun with Sergi Baca. That's up on HollywoodUnlocked.com. You can go and check that out. I also talked to Yanla Van Zant, and we're putting up all the links to all her services and stuff that she talked about and her products, so you can check that out. And uh, yesterday we interviewed Dame Dash, so that comes out later on uh, next week. Dame Dash was that was lit. Well, if JoJo's your favorite, have questions. So, I'm here, Alicia Bernie. I don't know if that's really, I don't know if that's really JoJo though. Because nobody's texted me to say that that was JoJo. Okay. So, we're going to wait for JoJo. Um, and if it ain't, and if her account's not working, we will, uh, I guess, rec wait and do it again. But I'm gonna wait. Oh, there she is. Okay, cool. Oh, it's working. It's working How now. are you? <laughs> wait, was that really you from another account, or was somebody trying to trick me? No, oh, I think that was my manager. Was that Katie? No, it was somebody named Bernie or something. I don't know. I don't know that man. Bernie. Okay. First of all, I'm extremely mad that we've never, have we ever met? I don't know. We have mutual friends, right? Big Billy Clark? Billy, uh, Stevie, yeah. Damn, and then it don't seem right. It doesn't seem right, but I, um, I, was, uh, I started Quarantine Chronicles last week because everybody's in the house board. You've been keeping us uh, entertained with covers and other songs. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, let me reach out to JoJo because I feel like I feel like you're one of the most underrated people in music, to me. Whoa, thank you. I mean, shit, I'd rather be underrated than overrated. <laughs> Shout out to half the people on Love & Hip Hop with me. Um, but yeah, Yikes! <laughs> no, I think you're dope. I mean, yo, you saw you went up with Mariah. I mean, and the, and the fact that you know you're good and you can hang with a Mariah and still show her praise, I think is dope. <laughs> Look, we're, I mean, first of all, Mariah Carey taught us all how to sing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, for anybody who doesn't give props to Mariah, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, how could you not? You know what I mean? She's yeah. she's the GOAT, and um, I just always humble myself at the Mariah altar. So, um, yeah. And, and we're different gener. It's not a, there's no competition. She wins. She has 9,000 number ones, and I'm still a, I'm still an infant in, in the eyes of when I consider, you know, uh, the, our careers, so yeah. But don't, but don't you think though that like, I, and see what I respect about that is I grew up in the era of Whitney Houston, uh, Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna, you know, all of the icons that show love to each other. I mean, even though there were some perceived rivalries in music, there was never, there was always like respect. Like you knew an artist was talented, you gave them their props. Why do you think, um, why do you think that's missing now? Do you think it's just super com more competitive, social media? I don't know, from my perspective, my, my vantage point, I don't perceive it that way. I think people are giving each other props. At least, I don't know, my, my baseline is like, I have to give it up. When, when I see something that's great, I'm like, it's fucking great. You know, I just, it feels so much better to celebrate than to hate. Now, I didn't mean to make that rhyme, just so happens to rhyme, but, um, and I do feel, I personally feel respected and I, and I, and therefore I, it just feels like it should be cyclical. Like, don't, don't hold it in. I, I love telling women they're beautiful, like be, when they are, you know, when I see something that, that I dig, I'm like, oh my God, wow, 
you look great, you smell great, just fucking, it feels better, just say it. And it's good energy, and you get that yeah. energy back. I think so, I do think it comes back, yeah. So recently I was watching, um, I was on YouTube, because I'm bored, I have nothing to do uh, but create content and go on YouTube and Netflix, but I saw you, uh, PJ Morton, and a lot of people, the piano album was fire. Oh, man. I don't what know a... why I discovered that so late, but it was so fire. What, his, um, his piano album? Yeah, but the bit, yeah, I, like, I, I was late to the party, but I, but I saw it. You, you're, not, you're not that late. We're just happy you found us, so it's yeah. all good. Um, but that was such a fun day. Like, we didn't really know what we were getting into. He just hit me, and he's like, I'm going to get some friends together. We're just all going to sit by the piano. And only someone as otherworldly talented as him could, could pull that off. Yeah. Yeah, I reached out to him, and, and uh, I want to get him on my show. And I'm not going to ask you too, too much here because I want you to come on our show too. Uh, we're syndicated through iHeart and we've always, oh, cool. wanted, we've always wanted to get you on there, but now that we're connected officially, we can make that happen. Perfect. All right, so what are you doing to stay busy? I love the, uh, uh, the place in the background. It looks very artistic and very, oh, uh, the, the, it, it has the, the feng shui, there's open space. Uh, do you have a man over there? Nope, nope, no man, it's, it's my mama. But my mama's sitting on the couch over here. Hi mama. <laughs> Mama's like, don't ask my, mama's like, don't ask my daughter no crazy shit now. No, you know what? Um, I am in a time in my life where I am not settling, okay? I have been pretty much in one relationship to the next um, since I was 14. And during the writing and recording of this album, I was just like, uh, I really need to take some time to figure out exactly who I am, independent of anybody else, and what my boundaries are, what my likes and dislikes, you know, better late than ever so i wanted to do it before i jumped into that next chapter of my life because one day i'd like to have kids and stuff but you know i wanted to get in touch with myself first so no man over here but your but your single is called man right it's called man but the vibe of it is like my favorite lyric is probably i've been getting com well there's several but like i've been getting comfortable on my own and shit, loving it i can handle it so if i'm gonna love someone damn i'm gonna need a fucking man Someone to love me like a fan. I need somebody who can love me like I love me. Love me like I can. Because I don't disappoint myself anymore. Right. You know what I mean? I, I, can, I can trust myself. So until I'm, I'm chilling for right now is what I'm saying. Wait, how did you disappoint yourself in the past? Oh, God. I mean, just making a, making a commitment to myself and then breaking it. Like, even, even if it's something as simple as like, okay, I said I was going to take a jog this morning. And then I don't like, I, I don't get too mad at myself for things like that. I allow myself to be human, but um, you hold yourself accountable and hold myself accountable. And I show myself love and respect and I falter like I, I'm not perfect. I'm no ascended master by any stretch of the imagination. But, but you know, I, I, I dig myself. So I need to, you know, it's about finding an equal. So we just had um... Who do we just have? We just had Deborah Cox on the show. She's another R&B powerhouse. We talked about who, who are some of the um, who are some of the R&B queens that you look up to or that you like pay homage to? Mm. Um, Anita Baker. Fire. Brandy, Layla Hathaway. Um, I don't know, like. Because genre feels confining, but so, so some of the singers, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify Eric Badu as R&B, certainly not anymore, but her voice is so incredibly special. I think of Jill Scott, um, someone who, you know, transcend, transcends any genre is obviously Beyonce. She is her own thing. Um, and I just, yeah, all these, there's so much great talent. Okay, so as a singer, when you're like preparing, what is your... I guess when you're preparing for a single or an album or you're preparing for new music, what is your creative process? Like, do you have to have incense and candles and, you know, the- I do like to set a mood. I'm a very sensual person. So I like smell, feel, taste, you know, I, I like those things, but it's just, um, it's about, yeah, creating a comfortable zone and, and doing the work on the, on the back end. So like, making sure that I, that I'm journaling. I do like stream of consciousness writing just to see kind of where my head is at. And, um, but there's no one particular way to do it. A lot of collaboration. I really like 
seeing what I bring to the table and then what another, you know, what a producer or a co-writer, what we can create together. So I was talking to uh, a friend of mine the other day who's close with um, Taylor Swift, and she's been very public about uh, losing control of her masters, not having control of her music. You recently record, a friend of mine said you recently recorded all of your music over? My first two albums, because they, they weren't available on streaming services. Was that, was that because of the same, similar kind of situation? Her situation is that she doesn't own the rights to her music, but her music is available for streaming. Got it. Um, the record label that I was with didn't make any of their artists' music available on streaming. I guess they didn't do the deal with Spotify and iTunes and stuff. So that's why you can't find Aaliyah's music on mm, streaming okay. services. So our, our situations are a little different. When you, when you re-record, so you re-recorded yours for streaming, does that then give you different type of ownership over your material? It means that my music is finally available now to be streamed, whereas it wasn't. And it means that, um, that I can control what happens with those masters so they can be synced or licensed. And people, uh, you know, the collaborators on the, behind the scenes, the writers and producers of those songs, from my first two albums are now able to get royalties to collect royalties from it because oh, that's dope. music isn't there, you know, nothing happens with it. So being that you've been successful in building like your own fan base, like you're one of the people that has uh, a loyal fan base that follow you, that love you anytime you go live or you put something out there, they're waiting for you. Do you think about independence and becoming more independent in music? I am really happy with the level of independence that I experience right now. I mean, I have a joint venture with Warner Records and I have my imprint Clover Music and I eventually want to be really hands on with helping other artists find their path because everybody's path is going to be different. And I think when we compare and we look to the left and right of us, that's when the joy is out of this experience. And we have to remember how lucky we are to, to get to live this type of life. It's crazy right. to live a creative life. Wow, to be an artist, like, you know, we really don't have anything to compare it to. That, 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 there is freedom in that. So I think, uh, like, do I want to go fully independent? I don't know, maybe one day, but like, I feel, I like this partnership. I like, because at the end of the day, the label still has more money than me. So I'm happy to use their resources. And, and, resources. and, it's, a, and it's a working relationship. So. It's a working relationship, yeah. It's not like I feel like a, you know, when I signed my first deal and I was 12 years old, I felt like, oh, these people are like my family. These are like right. my father figures and uncles and stuff. And like, I, I don't look for that now in my business dealings. <laughs> that's smart. Yeah. But, I that's, mean, that, <laughs> but, that's, but that, that, that's smart. But that's good that you can, you know, grow out of it. Because I think sometimes, you know, we, we were talking to Dame Dash yesterday. We were talking specifically about like just how the industry has been over the years with, you know, people having different contract issues early on it's good when you can like learn what works for you and then just fall like fall into that you know you have to learn like i think we need to never stop learning i i will i'll consider myself a per perpetual student i mean i um over the over the grammys th this year um i was fortunate enough to be invited to quincy jones's home and he had a conversation there um, with, with another like executive who's been in the, you know, producer and executive who's been in the game for a long time. And even Quincy was saying that he's still learning. He's still a student. This is Quincy Jones. Crazy. You know, so that, that really puts things into perspective and, and just. Yeah. Like know. school, school never stops. Like it never, never stops. Yeah, yeah. We have to keep learning and, and hopefully taking something positive from even things that were challenging. Hmm. And does that come from your own, um, where do you draw that from? Is that because you seem very like you're young, but you seem very mature. Does that make sense? I mean, that's you know what I mean. I'm young, but I'm ready. <laughs> um, I think I've always well, I've always been an old soul. Even when I was a kid, people like I, I never wanted to be a kid. But now that I'm 29 and I'm clearly a grown woman, I I think I just feel like. I do feel like a young OG. Like I have been in the game for a long time and I feel confident, I feel secure, but I feel very like free. I don't feel burdened by my experiences or anything. I feel like it's all good. And that's actually what the, where the title of this album came from. The album is called Good to Know, it's out May 1st. Oh. And it's, 
it just came from a sense of like everything that's going on, all the opinions, all the whatever, it's all just information and it's all good. It's all good to know. Like, okay, that's how you feel, good to know. This is how you're gonna react, good to know. You know, and it's good to know also that I can trust myself. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you wanna act crazy, you wanna do some wild shit, it's good to know. Like so, here so I am. This, so this sounds like a, um, like a female empowerment kind of situation. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just a, just an empowerment situation in general. I just happen to be female. Um, but it's about finding your own unique way to be yourself and to feel strong in that. Mm. Okay, let's take some, can we take some questions from some of your fans? Yeah. Okay, so this person's asking, when are we getting an official JoJo and Tori Kelly collab duet? Oh my God, that's my girl. We've known each other since we were teenagers and I, I really think it's just a matter of time. We were just texting the other day. Um, there's nothing but love and respect there. And yeah, hopefully soon, maybe. I'm, I'm working to get my own studio set up here at, at the crib and like learn how to record myself and anything and, and all that. So the, the true answer is I don't know when, but it will happen. But you guys are talking in and time will make it work itself out. That's the vibe. Okay, please ask her what she would be doing if she wasn't an artist. I think I would still consider myself an artist. You know what I mean? Like, I think that I was born to be an artist in some way. Um, I think that I would be doing maybe something in a more like mixed media visual art type thing. Maybe I would like make things or I, I don't know. Maybe I would be doing something creative. I would certainly be doing something creative, whether that's teaching yoga, because there's creative spirituality, like or teaching yoga, or, you know, maybe I would be an exotic dancer. Maybe I would be a cook. I don't know. It would be something sensual and something creative. That's dope. Okay. How about a collaboration with Demi Lovato? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. She, she, she knows. She knows I'm ready. She, oh, you guys talk also? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, <laughs> I kind of, I'm getting the feeling like something's already in the works. Uh, that's, that's my girl. We've known each other a long time, too. She can sing her friggin' ass off. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to play. Okay, so <laughs> somebody says, who would be a choice to collab? Oh, no, somebody, who, who would be a choice that you'd want to collaborate with in the future? Or who have you collaborated with on this new album? Um, <clears throat> this album is so much about me getting to know myself that they're, but between me and my producer, so it's Lido, Doc McKinney, and 30 Rock, 30 who produced the box for Roddy Rich and stuff. But it's, it's, it's me, it's my pen and my stories. Um, but who I want to collaborate in the future, um, I would love to work with The Weeknd and Drake. Actually, I think I love Canadians. I think I low-key want to be Canadian. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the the, the Weeknd, I, I wrote and recorded a lot of the album up in Toronto at House of Balloons, which is uh, the studio that I think he did a lot of like his first projects at. So I was kind of inspired by the vibe of, of Toronto and stuff. So that'd be, that'd be cool. Well, speaking of Toronto, well, speaking of Canada, what did you think of Justin Bieber's um, Journals album? Because that was a pretty dope, I thought it was a pretty dope R&B record. I haven't listened. You haven't heard his album Journals? No, is that the most recent one with Yummy? No, it's like, it's, it's like not old, old, but it's like old. No, I haven't listened. There's so much music out there. There's a lot like, of music. There's a lot of you music. You know, it's, it's no shade at all. It's just that there's so much music. I just be listening to other shit. Okay, when you get a chance, check out Journals. He has a okay. fire ass. Um, okay, this okay. person wants to know, are you ever going to go back to acting in film or on stage? Yeah, I'm totally down. To be honest, like I was so depressed when I was going through the lawsuit and I felt like I was, I felt really deflated. I felt really defeated. So I didn't take, like, while I could have dove, you know, dived into acting and like pursued that seriously, I didn't. I was so distraught about uh, not owning my voice, not being able to continue on with my singing career. So honestly, it's kind of an out of, out of sight, out of mind thing. I, I've, I still get strip scripts that pass my way every once in a while, but I, I, I don't want to jump to do something that I'm not passionate about. So, uh, you know, maybe if the right project comes along, I'd be down, but I, I just want to make sure it's right. It has to be something that's aligned with my purpose and, you know, my truth. All right, so 
So are you a writer as much as you're an artist? Like, do you write for other people? I have written for other people. I've had some placements on other artists and stuff like that, like overseas. And I think like a K-pop artist and um, some, you know, my mom, my mom is back this year. Great writer. Thanks, Ma. Listen, um, there's my, that's where the money's at, right? That is where the money's at, yes. So, um, you know, I have a lot of songs that I definitely want. I want to write more for other artists because I like stepping outside myself. Like, it, sometimes it's really nice not to think, keep thinking about your damn self. Like, to, put, to tell someone else's story is pretty tight. What up, boy, Wanda? I see you in here. Someone, We're just talking what, about Canada. <laughs> what, one of your fans is asking if you can uh, re-record Butterflies from your first album. Oh my God, I love that song. SZA told me that's her favorite song of mine. And I totally forgot about it actually until she mentioned it to me. Um, I will do a version on my IG Live for you. Who, who, who asked that question? The Chocolate Bunny? The chocolate okay, bunny. I got you. I'll do it. I, I love SZA. You know what's so, what I love about, well, I love her, but she's so shy. Like I told her, I said, hey, we should do an interview. She was like, that terrifies me. I'm like, why? Yeah, I know, right? And she's like the coolest chick on the she planet. Really is. And it's so interesting that, you know, yeah, she, she is a bit shy, but I love her. I love her heart. What a sweet I'm person. gonna text her and say, Jojo got through it. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay, this person wants to know, would you do a whole collaboration album like Ed Sheeran did? Absolutely, yes. That'd be fire. I want to collaborate with all these motherfuckers. Come on, let's go. Like, don't be scared. You and, you and Kalani, have you, got, have you and Kalani ever did anything? Me and who? Kalani. No, we haven't, no. You guys are kind of like the sim so, like not similar sound, but similar vibe, right? For sure, yeah, I love Kalani. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is the song with Diane Warren going to be on the new album? <laughs> I don't think so. No, actually, well, it's definitely not on this one. But um, I am going to continue to put out music in, like, different installations way more regularly than I ever have. Like, there were different forces and different people in my life that kind of made me feel like I shouldn't be releasing music all the time. And, like, now that that's not an issue, I'm just going to be releasing a lot more music. But, no, it's not on this one. What are you doing to pass this time in quarantine? Um... I am spending time with my mom, my dog. So I'm really lucky that I'm not fully alone. I'm cooking a lot, baking. I think I perfected my vegan chocolate chip cook recipe, cookie recipe. And um, yeah, cooking a lot of plant-based meals. I'm not perfectly plant-based, but mostly. And um, been learning piano very slowly, but surely it's mad humbling. Oh, <laughs> like I, just exercising. Bought a, I just bought a piano. Oh, good for you. I have no clue what I'm doing. I played a couple keys and I just turned it off. I'm gonna, I have, there's YouTube tutorials though, but still I need less. That's That's what I've been doing actually. I've just been watching YouTube tutorials and kind of learning that way. Nice. Okay, so well, one other thing that you've been baking is a tour that's gonna start in August. My birthday's in August, so that's the perfect month to launch a tour. Oh, well, I'm just ready. I'm so ready to be on the other side of this crazy, crazy experience because I miss people so much and I miss the, as, as nice as it is to be able to connect with people on, you know, via technology, it's so different. It's not the same when you can touch and buy. Touch or like, or feel their energy and it's just a different thing. So I'm really eager also to like bring these new songs to life. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. And hear them sung back to me and like just have that exchange. That's what I live for. Okay, so my birthday is in August. I cannot wait to get out of here uh, to go somewhere. So <laughs> since you're going to start in London, you're going to start in the UK. Where is it starting in London? Yeah, I think I think yeah, somewhere in the UK. Okay, so I'm going to try to make it to. I've never seen you perform, so I'm going to try oh, to make it to your London show. Oh, it's about to be lit, yo! I love the UK. I have a huge fan base over there, so they always turn up for me. So come, that'll be so yeah. fun. No, I will. We have lots of we have lots of fans out there, so I definitely will come. I love that. Okay, and then you'll be in the U.S. when? In May? Oh, no. Nope, that's been, that's no, been no, pushed back. That's backwards. That's yeah, backwards. so I think it's November. I think the U.S. tour starts in November. November, okay, okay, okay. Um, what about Ariana Grande? Have you guys ever talked about collaborating? I love her. Actually, we, we hung out a little bit backstage when I was on tour with Fifth Harmony, and uh, it was me, her, Victoria Monet, and she's just a cool-ass girl, for real, and her talent is enormous. Um, we haven't talked about collaborating, but I would love to. I seriously think she's dope. 
Okay, and this question has been up here several times. I wanted to ask too, but I'm, I wasn't going to, but since they said it, uh, can you sing a note on our way out? A note? Or just a something. <laughs> okay, so she did her vocal warm up for you. That was great. So listen, I don't want to take up too much here because I do want to continue to share you with our audience. We have a show, like I said, uh, and we're still doing the show, but I want to wait till we're in the studio again, vibing, and we would love you to come on and uh, before you go on your tour and really promote the fuck out of that. Hell yeah. All right, well, we're connected now. So thank you, Joja. I appreciate you spending some time with us. Thanks, man. Nice to connect with you. Stay sane, stay safe. Absolutely. Bye, Mom. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.